Godzilla, King of the Monsters, was directed by Michael Doherty and stars Kyle Chandler, Millie Bobby Brown, Vera Farmiga, Ken Watanabe. Tons of talent in the film. Some holdovers from Gareth Edwards' Godzilla film that came out in 2014. But this one continues that film's story as well as branching off of Kong Skull Island. And in this film, Godzilla faces off against a considerable amount of monsters while some humans on the ground try to do some stuff with the military. So in other words, it's a Godzilla movie. I've loved Godzilla ever since my mom brought home the American re-edited version with Raymond Burr included from the library when I was a little kid. And in 1998, when I was 10 years old, I thought Roland Eimerich's Godzilla was the best thing I had ever seen. Gratefully, since then, I have developed a brain. I think. And I really liked Gareth Edwards' Godzilla in 2014 when I first saw it. In subsequent rewatches, I don't like it as much as I did at the time, largely because of one of the biggest complaints with that film, which was, not enough Godzilla, why are you holding back on Godzilla? Totally understand those complaints. The makers of this film definitely took that criticism and said, you know what, we're just gonna have a lot of Godzilla and a whole bunch of other monsters too. This movie has most of the famous Godzilla monsters, and if you saw the trailer, you know that already. And they're amazing. The monster sequences in the movie, the fights, the battles, the spectacle that come with these creatures is jaw-dropping. It's easily the best part of the movie, and it's highly satisfactory whenever stuff with them is going on. Unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff with some really boring-ass people, too. They clearly took the criticism the first film had and ran with it, and they gave us a lot more of the monsters. You see Godzilla a lot and often, and that's going to please fans. But you also have a lot of time with some people. And if you thought the human beings in Gareth Edwards' Godzilla weren't fleshed out well, you are going to be bored to tears with the people in this movie because they are just there to give exposition. Just about every scene in between a monster fight is just people in a room telling a story, sometimes complete with what appears to be a PowerPoint presentation. There's like two sequences in this movie where characters just have images stored and ready in multiple windows to open at just the right moment as they narrate over this image a, a great story. This happens constantly throughout this movie. It's, to me, a big disappointment as someone who loves Godzilla. I have yet to see that perfect Godzilla movie since the original. It just hasn't happened yet. Even though I, I love the scope of Gareth Edwards' film, Gareth Edwards really understood the size, the massive proportions of these creatures. This new film is not as beautiful looking. The shots aren't as impressive. The sequences with Godzilla and all the other creatures feel less impactful because since there's more of them, they feel less precious. You could talk about the original Jurassic Park and how they perfectly spaced out the sequences with the dinosaurs, but that movie also has amazing characters, likable characters. And so you care about the humans and you actually want to see what they're doing. And the dinosaurs are like this awesome side thing that's so fucking cool, but also it has Ian fucking Malcolm. <laughs> this movie doesn't have anybody like that. It just has a lot of competent actors who are giving fine performances as they read bad dialogue. I talked to my friend after this movie, and we both agreed that the script felt like first draft. It couldn't possibly be. They had five years to work on this movie. Five years! One of the biggest complaints with the MCU films, or the DCEU films, or the Star Wars films nowadays, is that they're not given enough time to work on each movie. That they're, they're having to rush out these movies into theaters to get people to come and see them and not forget about the franchise because it's real time nowadays, you know what I mean? They had five years to work on this film and I do not understand why the characters are robots. I don't understand why the story is ludicrous. Characters make choices in this movie with the end goal of monster chaos all over the world. Yeah, we all want to see that, but wouldn't it be nice if we got to that? by some logical means? Something that makes sense? I don't want to get into spoilers. The film's not out yet, and I'm not going to. But the way this film goes about getting these things released is insane. It just seemed like the writers really wanted to get these creatures loose so they could have a bunch of fight sequences in a city and not care about logic, reasoning, or anything that makes sense. And that was so disappointing to me because yet again we have a movie that is essentially saying, hey, monsters are fucking cool, right? Don't you love Godzilla? Yeah, we do. Okay, but let's also have half this movie just be filled with mindless robot characters that you don't give a shit about. 
A-list actors appear on a webcam to introduce a weapon that is shot and then is instantly disregarded and never discussed again. People die left and right, no spoilers, and, and you never feel like there's any mourning. You never feel like you're catching up with these people. They just don't feel like they're real. They don't feel like human beings because the movie is so laser focused on having enough of the monsters that they seem to have completely forgot about the importance of story and character. It's only the two most imperative aspects of a film. It's like they took that criticism from the first film and said, okay, we're gonna give you a lot more Godzilla and other creatures, but we're also gonna make everyone else even worse. And so it almost equals out to the problems people have with the first one. Yeah, there wasn't as much Godzilla, but at least it had fucking Brian Cranston in it for a while. <laughs> This movie doesn't have any character that I latched onto. Maybe Millie Bobby Brown, who's really good in the movie, but I don't even remember what her name in the movie was because she's just daughter in distress for the whole movie. She barely does anything of merit. And there's a central conflict between her and her parents that is glossed over and barely explored. It could have been so much better than it was. This was a massive disappointment to me because, yeah, you get a lot of cool monster fights and the visuals are spectacular. And if that's all you want to see, okay, go have fun. But if you would like to have a story that's cohesive, that makes sense, with characters that feel like human beings, that have a path, that have real motivation, that don't change their motivation every other scene because the script really needs them to be at point A or point B for the monsters to do this thing, then you're gonna be disappointed like I was with this movie. I thought it could have been a lot better and as a massive Godzilla fan, I left disappointed. I'm gonna give Godzilla King of the Monsters a C minus. I don't actually know what fans are gonna think of this movie because I just don't know what Godzilla fans want to see because there's so many Godzilla fans. The people who specifically only like the Japanese Godzilla films watch the Godzilla movies because of their satire and their political commentary. But the American Godzilla films, they just want to see Godzilla eat a building and like punch a monster. They don't give a shit about anything else sometimes. But I gotta be honest, sometimes this movie did remind me of a Dean Devlin film. If you don't know who that is, he produced the 98 Godzilla and a lot of those like disaster type movies that came out during that time period. And the dialogue in this movie and the way things are set up, the way weapons are set up and characters are just thrown away left and right. It reminded me of that, which I was shocked by, to be honest. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. I'm curious to know what you guys think of the new film. As always, thanks again for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.